Hello, this is Daryl Castle with today's podcast. Today is Monday, August 26, 2013, and today we go back to Syria and look at U.S. response options to the use of chemical weapons by Bashar al-Assad in Syria, while keeping in mind that Assad may or may not have actually launched the chemical weapons attack or caused the attack. We know the chemical weapons were used. That is obvious. People died. Traces of these agents on their bodies. But who did it? That is another question. The U.S. and its allies have positioned their forces for a possible military strike, which makes Assad kind of a suicidal person, doesn't it? Because he must have known if he did this, he would expose him to attack by Western forces and their militaries, U.S. with two strike carrier groups in the Persian Gulf, their ships gathering in the Med, their air forces in Egypt, Jordan, Turkey, and Israel ready to strike his country. Why would he do something like that to provoke such an attack if he actually did? But there you go. The extent of the U.S. strike will depend on U.S. objectives, and who knows what those are. Number one, a punitive action directed at leadership in command and control centers is a possibility. Number two, a strike to degrade military capabilities, thus tilting the balance of the war in favor of the rebels. Number three, an assault only on chemical weapon stores, thus reducing his ability to use those weapons. These are all possibilities. And the final possibility, a complete ground invasion of Syria, not very likely it would take quite a while to assemble the forces to do that, but the air forces, the cruise missile forces, and so forth are all there and in place. The more ambitious the attack, of course, the more the U.S. has invested in Syria now and post-war. This all makes no logical sense, but not much about war seems to make sense. It is the most nonsensical form of human endeavor, in my mind. The U.S. now has warships gathering and just waiting for the president who has his finger on the trigger to pull that trigger. Everybody seems to want this war. The Democrat war lovers in Congress and the Senate seem to want it. There was a time when you could count on at least some Democrats to be pro-peace, but no more. Representative Elliot Engel, Democrat of New York, says Obama should immediately launch a cruise missile attack without consulting Congress. He says that is not necessary if NATO and the UN give their approval. So I guess we Americans now, we American people, we know where we stand. We know where our representatives stand, these toothless lapdogs yapping but not biting. A government with great military power, accountable to no one, loose in the world. Secretary of Defense Chuck Hagel says the president is considering all different options, all different options, and will get his facts straight before acting. Well, that's comforting, isn't it? At least he's going to get his facts straight before he goes and bombs these people. I'm glad he at least wants to do that before he intervenes in someone else's civil war. Why is this our business? Why do we have to add to the misery of these Syrian people? Because that's what we will end up doing. Over 100,000 dead already, but that's not enough. We have to add to it. I doubt if President Obama has considered the option of minding his own business. That's pretty much everyone's business, I guess, when you run the world, in addition to the cost to the United States in terms of morality and human suffering, the danger of involving Iran and possibly Russia in a region-wide war with nuclear implications, which the administration seems perfectly willing to risk. In addition to all those things, I point out that we can't afford this war. We're 17 trillion dollars in debt. That is the on budget debt, not the off budget debt. We can't afford social security. We can't afford medical care for our people, but we can't afford this war, can't we? Well, what should we do? Well, I can tell you that, folks. That's not that tough at all. No more bankers' wars. Come home, mind our own business. Respect the law. That means 
from the president on down, rebuild America, stop offshoring our jobs, secure this country, control our debt, pay down debt, and put America back on the constitutional path once more. That's the way I see it, folks. This is Daryl Castle, Monday, August 26th. Until next time, folks, thanks for listening.